Let's take a look at Motion Blur. Please note that this tutorial was created on an iPad Pro using Animation Pro version 1.6. Your screens may look a little different. Here's a short repeating video of the Animation Pro icon bouncing around a scene. The icon is moving so fast that it becomes difficult to track its actual movement. If I add motion blur to this animation, the result is much better. So let's take a quick look at how this may be achieved. Here is a simple animation consisting of two identical frames. I'll change the figure's position in frame 2 so that we have the world's shortest animation of a figure moving to the right. To add motion blur to this movement, I can perform the following steps. 1. I'll tap on the figure to select it. 2. I'll open the figure inspector. 3. I'll choose the motion blur category and 4. I'll set the density to 1. And absolutely nothing appears to happen. And that's because the motion blur is not displayed as a live preview as you animate. To see the motion blur effect, I will need to either export the animation or preview the current frame. So I'll press the small blue button at the top right of the figure inspector to preview the frame. And there it is. Now as you can see, there are a few motion blur settings to play with here. So let's take a quick look. The threshold value defines just how far a figure has to move before motion blur is applied. At the moment, the threshold value is set to 100. So motion blur will only be applied if the figure moves more than 100 pixels. Now it is important to note that the distance a figure moves is relative to either the last frame or tween. So if, for example, you move a figure 100 pixels from one frame to the next, but have set up Animation Pro to insert a tween between each of those frames, then the figure will only actually move 50 pixels at each step. In which case, Motion Blur will not be applied where the threshold is set to 100. The density value specifies how many times Animation Pro should draw the figure to produce the motion blur effect. The higher the value, the more pronounced or dense the motion blur effect will be. Higher density values will also produce a better result where the figure is changing significantly between frames. Use the next dial to specify how blurred the effect should be. The opacity dial specifies how opaque the motion blur effect should be. At 0%, the motion blur will be completely invisible. Effectively, it will be turned off. At 100%, the motion blur will be opaque. Please note that the level of opacity is also affected by the blur and density settings. So 100% opacity will not produce a completely opaque effect where the blur is high and the density is low. If you turn on the high quality switch, Animation Pro will produce high resolution motion blur effects which may, under some circumstances, produce better results. High quality motion blurs, however, will use considerably more memory and will take longer to render. The fall off setting will only take effect where the density is set to a value higher than 1. When turned on, Animation Pro will produce a motion blur effect that progressively becomes more transparent towards its tail. Now it's difficult for Animation Pro to produce motion blur between substituted figures because there are no in-between states between a figure and its substitute. It can, however, try to approximate motion blur for these situations if you leave this switch turned on. And finally, the two buttons at the top of the motion blur panel specify whether the motion blur effect should appear behind the figure or in front of the figure. Now generally speaking, the type of motion blur produced by Animation Pro 
is translational motion blur. That is, it is designed to work best with figures that move large distances from frame to frame. You can, however, still produce reasonable results for figures undergoing other transforms, such as rotations. Let's take a look at a quick example. In this case, the figure has simply been rotated in frame 2. So I'll need to start by setting the threshold value to 0 in order for motion blur to be applied. Now, when it comes to rotations, the best results will be achieved with higher density values. As you can see, a density of 3 looks pretty ordinary, whereas a density of 20, in conjunction with a lower opacity, looks far better. And whilst I'm talking about the density setting, higher density settings will also be required if you wish to see motion blur applied to figures that move from inside to the outside of the visible frame. For more information, please refer to the limitations section of the motion blur topic in the Animation Pro Help. Finally, it is also possible to specify which particular items in a figure participate in motion blur. Let's take another look at our simple animation, and let's say that I only want the robot's wheel to produce motion blur as the figure moves. I can do that by 1. Selecting the robot's wheel in frame 2. 2. Pressing the motion blur none button to turn off motion blur for all of the items in the figure. And 3. Turning on the motion blur switch for the selected item, which in this case is the wheel. Now when I preview the frame, only the wheel produces motion blur. And that's it. Except to say that the motion blur threshold, density, blur and opacity values are all animatable properties. So if, for example, the opacity is set to 100% in frame 1 and 50% in frame 2, a single tween between those frames will have an opacity of 75% applied unless you turn off motion blur tweening. Have fun! and thank you for supporting Animation Pro. Here's a short video of motion blur in action. I hope you found that as informative as I did. Thanks for watching.